rummaging around in my file. Hello, Dad. <laughs> I'm having trouble with a new book, and I thought I might find some snappy material down here. Have a grape. Thanks. You fellas don't know how lucky you are. You'll put on a case the murders of... A lot of character in that handwriting. Not the Augusta Stack. As far as I know, there's only one. As one of the heaviest taxpayers of this city, I demand the services of the police. Send a detective to my house as soon as you receive this. Be sure he doesn't look like a detective. She has her nerve. As I don't want my household to know I am consulting the police. Have the man announce himself as a tree surgeon, since some of my trees are really afflicted with borers. The real letter of a crank. And who have we got down here that don't look like a detective? Ellery. Oh, not me. I'm too busy. <laughs> Go on over, son. You uh, can't tell you might... You might get some material for a new novel. Walked right into it, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if she has any squawk that rates police attention, why, come back and report to me. Good morning, Mrs. Stack. I'm a tree borer. Yeah, you look more like the brush man. Manage with what you get, and I'll have no more of your impertinence, Alice. You'd think I was your slave instead of your daughter. You go up to your room at once. Heaven knows I'm old enough to have more than ten dollars a month allowance. Leave the room! Hadn't you better answer the door, Martin? Yes, madam. I have an appointment with Mrs. Stack. John? Good morning, Mother. Do you know what time it is? Well, I've been having a little trouble with my watch lately. Don't be impudent. You'll be at the hospital at nine every morning, or I'll remove you from your job. Where were you last night? At the theater. Well, what do you want? I'm uh, uh, the man about the borers. What? Uh, about the trees. Oh, why didn't you say so? Come in. You're from police headquarters. Don't look like a policeman. Well, they're getting some sense at last. Sit down. Inspector Queen sent me. Unlike most women, I generally come to the point. I want my hospital secretly investigated. Things are happening there that I neither like nor understand. Such as? I don't trust the medical director, Dr. Jenny. He disappears too often. From the hospital? No, in it. I believe that's why my sister died. While he was giving her a treatment, he left her to answer an emergency call, he said. But there was no such emergency. He simply vanished. Surely, Mrs. Stack, you can hardly suspect the doctor in charge of your hospital. Then why was he opposed to an autopsy? Why was she cremated in such indecent haste? But if she... the body has been already cremated, I hardly see how. I want Jenny watched by the police. In the hospital, secretly. I see. I'll report to Inspector Queen. Good morning, Mrs. Stack. Well, from, from all I can understand, it looks like a clear case of spite against Dr. Johnny. That Augusta Stack is as uncozy a party as I ever met up with. It's an interesting household, though, everybody hating the old girl. You can positively feel hatred seeping all over, practically in layers. Not bad. Maybe I can use it in the book. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I can't detail a man just to go over there and investigate bad feelings. Still, I think it's a matter that should be looked into. I looked. Well, look again. Be a sport. Go and prop yourself up in the stack hospital and be a patient. Not on your life, Dad. I'm a busy man. Oh, go on. Think it over. No, thanks. I thought it's out of the question. Say, ah, uh, please. Ah. Louder, please. Ah. Miss Tracy, hand me a blade. Miss Tracy, a blade, please. Wider, please. Hmm. What seems to be the trouble, Doctor? Apparently nothing, Mr. Queen. But I can't talk. Your tonsil's all right. There's no inflammation. There's nothing wrong with your throat. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Step into my office, please. Do you mean I'll always talk like this? Possibly, if you're not careful. 
What am I going to do, Doctor? Try and forget it. Can't forget a voice like this. I mean, don't worry about it. Have you ever visited a psychiatrist? Do you insinuate that I'm crazy? No, no, not in the ordinary sense. But frankly, Mr. Queen, your trouble is mental. Have you ever had a phobia? A secret fear of losing your voice? Not till now. Any nervous shocks or strain lately? That's better. Don't try to speak. Yeah, I won't. Have you been overworking? You bet. I'd like to keep you under observation for a few days. Could I? I mean, uh, I'd like to have a private room if I could. The admitting clerk will see after that. And would it be all right if I had our family nurse come over? Certainly. Come this way, please. Miss Tracy, will you take Mr. Queen to arrange for a room? Yes, Dr. Jennings. I've never been in a hospital before as a patient. I'm afraid I might be lonesome. You don't look like the lonesome type. Will you have a seat, please? I'll be right back. talking like that. They can't hear me. My overnight bag and get yourself a nurse's uniform. I'll be over as soon as I can get an outfit. Tell Dad. Don't forget your notebook and pencils. The clerk will see you now. Uh, thanks a lot. There goes the stack car now. Say, ain't this dangerous? Ain't I liable to get hurt? No, I've done this over a hundred times. And besides, you want your money, don't you? this a hundred times. Couldn't even see him. Well, I'll ride down the road and phone for an ambulance. You take me there. Have you got a cigar? Why, sure. Oh, brother. brother. Thanks. Oh, dear. broke his leg. Well, this isn't our call. No, we're supposed to pick up him as a stack. It won't hurt to take this guy along, too. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. This is a terrible thing to happen to you, Mother. Never mind bleeding over me. Just make sure the police catch that hit-and-run driver. Yes, of course. We'll do all we can. Mother, I'm sorry we quarreled. Please forgive me. Stuff. We always quarrel. We're ready for you now, Mrs. Stack.
operate on me. I don't want Dr. Jenny even in the room. There were two men in that car that hit me. I can identify them. I want them found and put in jail. Well, of course, Mother, right away. But it'll be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. That might not be so hard. There was a man brought in the same ambulance with you, crashed up at about the same place at the same time. He might be one of them. The same ambulance with me. Good thing for him I was unconscious. I believe he's in 511. Well, John, what are you waiting for? Go find out what you can about him. Yes, Mother. Come on, get going. Let's get this over. Am I glad to see you. If you had to be so stupid as to get smashed up, why did you let them bring you to this hospital? I couldn't help myself. Thomas smashed up the car and he takes a powder and the cop flags down your old lady's ambulance. And she saw you before you hit her. How does she know who I am? She does. She says she can identify the men who smashed into her car. In that case, you'd better get me, get me out of here in a hurry. Not me. You'd better get one of your own crowd to do that. Jay, you... No, no! Did you call? It's all right, nurse. The patient's a little uncomfortable. I'll take care of it. Now, you're in this with me. You wanted me to knock off your old lady, and I ain't gonna take the rap. Well, you must be out of your mind. When I convinced you that I couldn't pay you the money I owe you, you decided to get her out of the way so I would come into my inheritance. Well, you sure got your little story down pat, ain't you? You've been rehearsing it for the coppers? Look, you pointed out the car to me and you showed me how she always drives to town. Now look, don't get yourself all upset unnecessarily. I'll contact Thomas for you, huh? Say, why ain't you just a little bit worried? Worried? I am. She's being operated on right now. Well, you dirty heel. Doctor, I was about to use your phone. I was to meet Mrs. Stack here, but Miss Tracy tells me she met with an automobile accident. Yes, Dr. Dunn operated on her. May I ask why Mrs. Stack wanted you here, Mr. Crothers? I hope her condition is serious. A fractured femur is no picnic, but she has a very good chance. I asked you a question, Mr. Crothers. Oh, yes. It was on the matter of your anemia concentrate discovery. Mrs. Stack feels very strongly. I already know how very strongly Mrs. Stack feels. Unfortunately, my opposition is equally strong. My formula goes to the Medical Association as is ethical and proper. Legally, the discovery belongs to her. Even a lawyer can be wrong on occasion, Mr. Crothers. But not on this occasion, Dr. Janney. I have the written agreement between you and Mrs. Stack. I'm not interested in the vagaries of legal terminology. It's there in black and white, in plain language. Look at Clause 12, where it states that all formulas developed in the hospital laboratory belong to the hospital, and the hospital belongs to Mrs. Stack. There's no other possible legal interpretation. The formula is hers. Yes? Emergency call for Dr. Janney. Dr. Janney wanted in surgery. You'll have to excuse me. Could you tell me... No! Can you tell me why the little elevators with doors that don't work? No! <laughs> down these corridors. What are you here for, DTs? 
Oh, I lost the use of my voice. It's too bad you didn't lose the use of your limbs. Yeah. Look at you. I'd be ashamed, a man of your age, making a public spectacle of myself. Well, what'd you expect me to do? Stay in the room there where the place is on fire? If you'd give up whiskey, you might get the use of your voice back. There's no fire. What you heard or saw was the pole motor squad. Oh, I see. Now go on to your room and undress properly and go to bed. Yes, ma'am. Who are they using that pull motor on? Mrs. Stack. She suffocated after her operation. They tried artificial respiration, but were too late. You mean she's dead? What else could it mean? Tell me the fire's out. No, Mrs. Stack's dead. Huh? You'll have to bring in the body to make me believe that. It's a fact. She suffocated after an operation. I just came from her room. Line, please. Give me police headquarters. Apparently, she lapsed into a coma and suffocated while her face was turned to the pillow. But she seemed to be coming along so nicely. You must remember, she wasn't a young woman. Not even so. Miss Fox, have you been with the patient constantly? I didn't leave her for a minute. Her pulse was good. She was breathing naturally. I'm sure you were not at fault, Miss Fox. Thank you, Doctor. Have the family been notified? Yes, they're on their way up, Doctor. Oh, this is a most regrettable occurrence. The shock of the accident plus the operation was simply more than she could stand. I'm sorry to say. Doctor, I'm sure everything possible was done for her. Of course, if you and Mr. Stack would like an autopsy. Oh, no, 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 no. The publicity would be very distasteful and harmful to the hospital. I'll issue the death certificate. Thank you, Doctor. Poor oh, Mother. And there's no reason for delaying the funeral arrangements. I'm sure that Mother would want to be cremated. We'd better be going, Doctor. What do you think of the flowers? Ah, oh, gee, you didn't have to go and buy flowers for me. I didn't buy them. I found them on the doorknob. Yeah. Listen, Stack told me that you wanted to get out of here. Hey, what's the idea of smashing a guy up and then running out on him? Well, you look so peaceful under that tree. I didn't think you were hurt. I thought you were dead. Well, it ain't your fault I wasn't. Now, boss, don't start hollering. A guy can only do the best he can, you know. Hey, what's well, all right? I got a spare. Come in. Oh, look, it's our sponsor. Congratulations, Paige. How did you manage it? Manage what? Oh, it's all right with me if you want to play innocent. Did you have Thomas do it? How did you handle the nurse? No, what? No, I didn't have time to handle anybody. <laughs> well, you've nothing to worry about. Nobody suspects it's murder. Murder? You mean your old lady's been knocked off? Are you trying to put on an act with me? Say, if she's been killed, you done it. You might have waited till I get out of here. If I don't get out of here, I'm able to talk if necessary. Well, what could you say without implicating yourselves? And how you get out of here is your problem. I can't afford to be mixed up in it. What do you think of that? <clears throat> say, you'd better start to think of a way of getting me out of here. Where's Mr. Stack's office? Right over there. I insist upon knowing who sent for the police. Your mother. She demanded that we investigate this hospital, and now she's dead. If you don't mind, we'll continue with the investigation. Yes, Feely? Dr. Williams is almost finished with the examination. He'll be down in a minute. Good. Now, Mr. Stack. Oh, this is ridiculous. Dr. Jenny and Dr. Dunn have already examined the body and issued a death certificate. Miss hmm. Fox, did you leave Mrs. Stack's room any time after the operation? Why, I... None of our nurses would dare do such a thing. If you don't mind, I'm questioning Miss Fox. <laughs> Did you, Miss Fox? No, I didn't. I was there all the time. Oh. Yes, Williams? I find the deceased died of asphyxia. Just as we discovered, Dr. Janney. But I found the hyoid bone in the throat broken. 
which shows the deceased did not die of accidental smothering, but was strangled to death. Well, Miss Fox, how could anyone have sneaked into Mrs. Stack's room and killed her if you were there all the time? I've been up all last night on a very difficult case. I dozed off for a while. Oh, I see. What about the man in 511? Well, what about him? He was brought in in the same ambulance with Mrs. Stack. He said he'd been hit by the same hit-and-run driver. I heard Mrs. Stack ask her son to investigate the man. And so I did. I found him an innocent victim of the same crazy driver. Really suppose you go up to 511 and get acquainted with that man? Oh, now, wait a minute. I can't allow that. I can't have the patients annoyed by the police. No. It will be very bad for the hospital. <laughs> Don't worry, son. Vili has very, very soothing bedside manners. Sure. Dr. Janney, are you going to permit this? The matter seems to be out of my hands. Well, come on, let's get this investigation over. Oh, dear. thing to roll the dead people out on. Now, uh, you got to get on that. How? Well, uh, you raise up and I'll shove it under you. No, that won't do. Well, let me think. They use it for dead people. Janney's a reputable physician, and I still believe she died from natural causes. Ioid bone doesn't break itself. Well, we know that, William. You have them come for the body and have them perform an autopsy immediately. Okay, okay. I do all the work. <laughs> I don't feel like staying around here all night. Well, you can, you can get your mother's lawyer for me. What do you want with him? I want to ask him a few questions. There's two main motives for murder. Love and money. And I don't see much love around here. Hey, ouch, mother! That won't hurt. Now remember, if we bump into anybody, let me do the talking. started doing something. I am doing something. What are you doing? I'm thinking. Oh, dear.
awake, boss? Oh, yeah. Listen, you leave everything to me, and this will do you a cinch. Here we go. Mr. Queen's room is? Why, uh, uh, I really don't know. You, you better ask a nurse. Oh, nurse. Oh, nurse to you. I'm going to surgery. Just, nurse, just, just a moment. If you don't mind my telling you, your, uh, your petticoat is showing. Oh, thank you. You're a gentleman. Ah! Stop you right out, you! He stepped into a silence so profound he felt he could touch it. Oh, no. You can't touch silence. At least not where I come from. Since when are you the critic? He opened the door quickly and entered the room, gun in hand. If anyone opens this trap, I'll drill him. Don't move. Don't move, I tell you. Don't move. It's a lovely night, isn't it? Shut up. Nice work, Nicky. You almost made him blow our heads off. out the window. as I tell you and cut the chatter. That guy. 
guy must have wings. He's flown. That's Lou Thomas. He's, he's wanted at headquarters. You know, I'd give a lot to know how he's mixed up in this case. Why did I ever get this mess? Why didn't I go to the card game with my wife? Prepare the patient for surgery. Yes, Miss Jones. predicament I've ever in my life. <sighs> Thanks, lady. Oh. I'll mention it. You know, I don't think I can stand much more. First, I break my leg. They drag me in here. A drunken male nurse shoves me into a lady's ward. They start to operate on me. Now this. Be a pal, will you? And push me into men's ward. With pleasure. Oh. Dear. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. I'll have to leave you here till I find a nurse. I just realized I don't know where the men's ward is. Ain't you a nurse, lady? Of course I am. I'm a private nurse for Mrs. Stack. Yeah, well, Mrs. Stack is dead. I was her nurse then. I'm sure glad to meet you. You know, you're going to save my life again. Now tell me quick, why did you rub the old lady out? Me? You don't know what you're talking about. You might get by with that with the coppers, but you can't tell it to me. Uh, you either killed old lady Stack or you worked with somebody that did. I, I don't know anything about it. Huh? Coppers are trying to pin this thing on me. Now, lady, you come clean before I blast you out of this hospital. Now, this is going a little too far. Ah, oh, shut up. Push me out of here. Touch that. <laughs> Come on, Beanie, pull yourself together. Don't worry, boss. I got her covered. Oh, there you are. Shh, keep quiet. Come on, get it in here. Hurry up. Oh, dear. Get in there. I'm not Mrs. Stack's nurse. Lady, you'd better commence to whistle. Listen, don't try to be funny. Whistle means to come clean. Now, come on. Well, what become of the others? I sent them home. They can be questioned just as well in the morning. Well, that was rather high-handed to you, Mr. Stack. Well, where's Miss Fox? In her apartment, I suppose. She said she had a bad headache. Very interesting. Suspect number one among the missing. You think she did it? Pay no attention to my son. He has a habit of leaving at conclusion. Well, I can tell you this much. She knows a lot more than she said. Maybe so. You get her address from the desk and bring her back here. And I won't be needing you anymore. At least for the present. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Ooh.
Frank, haven't you got here? Take it easy now, Nikki. Take it easy. Come on out in the other room. Oh. Oh. Did, did you see her? She was hanging like that already dead when we got here. Come on now, now pull yourself together. <laughs> Now, don't be so upset. You're all right. Here, sit down over here. Tell me all about it. Surely you didn't see that sight and then light a cigarette. No, that's his. I wanted to call the inspector, but he locked me up and ran out on me. Who? Well, naturally, you couldn't expect him to stay with a body in there and the police already suspecting them of murder. Who's murder? Oh, Mrs. Stax, of course. If it hadn't been for that, he wouldn't have brought me here to face Miss Fox to find out whether I was really a nurse or not. What on earth are you talking about? Heavens is perfectly clear. Maybe it was foolish of me to say I was Mrs. Stack's nurse, but well, what else could I do without giving you away? Now, look, Nikki, I know you've had a shock, but try and pull yourself together and calm down and we'll get to the bottom of this. Now, who brought you here? Why, the man that took the shot at you, of course. And you told him you were Mrs. Stack's nurse? Really, Elry, it was the other one I told, the first one. The other, the first one? Why don't you listen? The first one ran into me when he was running around the hospital on a stretcher with a broken leg. I had to say I was a nurse and I couldn't say I worked for Mrs. Stack, so I, I said I worked for you. After Mrs. Stack was dead. That was brilliant. Well, got me here a few jumps ahead of you anyway. Well, go on. Well, that guy, I'm very excited. So he pulled a gun on me and told me to push him into the supply room. And suddenly I felt another gun in my ribs. Another gun? And the other one came in the supply room and told me to whistle. So I whistled and that made him madder than ever. Well, what's the matter with you? It's as plain as day. They're mixed up with Mrs. Stack somehow and they're afraid they'll be blamed for it. So after we got the first one down in the basement, the other one called the mob to get him out of there and then took me over to confront Miss Fox to find out whether I was really she or not. Well, Elroy, what are we going to do? I'm going to call Dad before I go completely nuts. That's a fine thing to say after I've wrapped the whole case up for you. We're here to pick up the body of Mrs. Stack. It's waiting for you in the storage room. Take it out through the back door. Okay. Here she is. Take it easy. I'm taking it easy. What do we do with this body? Put down ice. I'll work out in the morning. Not me. It's going to put me on the ice. Hey, what's, what's up? Say, brother, if this is your idea of a hideout, you've got to be dead all over, not just in the neck up. Hold it, boys. Madam Examiner's office, William speaking. Hello, Inspector. I was just going to phone you. What's the idea of sending a man over the broken leg when I was expecting Mr. Stack? Certainly he's alive. Send some of the boys for him. Yeah, we're holding him all right. Thanks. What, another one? Okay, Inspector, I'll be right over. What's he think this is, bank night? Here we are, boys. Time to send us to get you out. Swell idea, boss. <laughs> Always the clown. Quiet. There's cops around. Duck your head, boys.
Uh, what are you boys doing? Yeah. Uh, we're bringing a sick friend home from the hospital. Yeah, he didn't have money to pay for an ambulance, so we called for him in our delivery truck. Oh, the poor fella. What say for giving him a hand, Bill? Yeah, that's kind of a tricky thing to hold up the stairs. I'll tell you what you fellas do. You take the front end and we'll take the back. Okay. Uh, what's the matter with him? Uh, he's got a, a, a broken leg. I yeah. see. Yeah. Careful now. Don't hurt him. Yeah, it's nice of you guys to help us. Don't mention it. Hold on, old man. You'll fall off and break your other leg. Yeah. The blood must have rushed to his head. Get him back up there. Uh, Steady, boys. Well, it's about time you guys got here. You know, if I hadn't a big... Say, where are you going? Oh, no place, no place. I... I was just going to hang up my hat. Uh... These officers were kind enough to give us a hand up the stairs. Yeah, we couldn't have made it without their help. Well, that's very nice of you, coppers, and, and when I see my uncle, I'll, I'll tell him to take care of you, huh? That's no trouble at all. You shouldn't keep the poor fella covered up. He'll show to the one of air. Oh! Stay where you are. Get over there. Get over there. Sick friend, huh? You're nothing but a bunch of grave robbers. You'll get ten years for this and maybe life. Collect the hardware. Take care of that. It's a pearl handle. Phone the station. Right. Every time I want to go any place, somebody has to die. That's everybody's privilege. <laughs> Look, Vicky, you've had a tough night. Not at all. I don't want to miss anything. What are you doing here so late? Well, I frequently catch up with my work late at night. And naturally, after the events today, I couldn't sleep. Oh, I see. Well, I asked Dr. Janney to meet me here. Would you kindly call his home and see if he's left? Oh, I'm sure he's on his way if you wanted him. Thank you. You stay here. Sit down there and stay put. Oh, hello, Doctor. Uh, they're waiting for you in the office. Thank you, Mr. Queen. May I congratulate you on the miraculous recovery of your voice? Oh, oh thanks. Thanks, Doctor. I, I found the trouble was just uh, something temporary. Too bad it wasn't something permanent. Boy. Beg your pardon, Nurse. Now, is my slip showing? No. But I must say, you don't act much like a nurse. It's a disguise. I'm in on this case, but they won't admit it. Really? Can you identify this belt, Doctor? I never saw it before. Looks like a woman's belt. It is. It belonged to Miss Fox. She was strangled with it and then left hanging by the cord of her robe in her bathroom. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah, the hanging was made to look like suicide. Yeah, but the murderer made a bad mistake. He forgot the marks of the strangling with the belt. It would remain after death. The idea was obviously to make it appear that Miss Fox was guilty of Mrs. Stack's death and then committed suicide for fear of being arrested. I can't believe that Miss Fox murdered Mrs. Stack. That's the whole point. She didn't. But if she were in the room with her all the time? She wasn't. The murderer's second bad mistake. He overlooked this. Fortunately, she shoved it under the blotter before she let him in. What is it? It's a note she was writing to me. And in it, you will find that she did leave Mrs. Stack's room for at least ten minutes to make a long-distance telephone call. Here, see for yourself. I'll take your word for it. We checked with the operator and established the exact time of the call. Look, may I ask, gentlemen, why you're telling all this to me? Because at the time of Mrs. Stack's death, which was murder number one, coincides exactly with the time that you left this office to answer an emergency call. Now, what was that emergency call? I don't seem to recollect. Yes? Emergency call for Dr. Janney. Dr. Janney wanted his surgery. You'll have to excuse me, gentlemen. Just a moment. Do you always stay in your office late at night? He fainted. What's happened? 
happened? Find out who's calling Dr. Janney in surgery. You said there's no one in surgery. Hey, Dad, look at this. This buzzer starts that call. Emergency call for Dr. Janney. Dr. Janney wanted in surgery. It's obviously a gag he uses when he wants to get away. Yeah, to commit murder. Miss Tracy, perhaps you can tell us what ails Dr. Janney. It's an unusual heart condition he suffers from. He's managed to keep it from everyone but me until now. He'll be all right after he's laying down for a while. Billy, give Williams a hand. Up for Daisy. Bring him in here, please. There's a room at the back where he always lies down. Here's his alibi for the time of Mrs. Stack's murder. What do you mean? The attack is his alibi. Nicky, I told you to keep your nose out of this. <laughs> just, just a moment, son. You know, sometimes out of the mouths of babes as even sucklings and some women come words of wisdom. Now, Miss Super Sleuth, what, just what do you mean by his attack is his alibi? Well, it's bad business for a doctor if people find out he has attacks where he might flop down him in, isn't it? Yes, it might hurt him professionally. She says that he has them often and has to lie down to get over them. Nice deduction, Nicky. He used this contraption to get him away when he felt an attack coming on. He can talk now, Inspector. Well, Nicky, we'll see if you're right. Come on, Elwin. Well, it looks as though they're not going to arrest Dr. Jenny after all. Oh, I'm so relieved. Of course they're not. He didn't do it. The police have the man in jail right now. Why they did it, I can tell them an awful lot about it. Really? What man? The man with the broken leg. The man with the broken leg? The one who came into the hospital with Mrs. Stack. But I thought Mr. Stack had a talk with that man and found him completely innocent. Innocent, my hat. And why was he in such a panic to get out of the hospital? Uh-uh. He knows plenty. I hope the police will make him holler. Can you imagine my feelings when I... Well? <laughs> Miss Super Sleuth, your hunch was right. But I'm afraid that man went to a lot of trouble to conceal his ailments. I guess he was afraid Mrs. Stack would fire him if she found out. Who told me to sit out there and stay put? Now, could I tell you we're going to break your long record of gumming things up? Well, son, uh, go as our main suspect. You know, when Crothers told me that Mrs. Stack had willed most of her fortune to Janie and leaving only a small annuity to the children, I... But he seemed honestly unaware of that fact, so we were barking up the wrong tree. Pardon me, Inspector, but will you need me any more tonight? No, you can go. I would stay with Dr. Janney, but really, I'm just dropping on my feet. Mm -hmm. I'll send another nurse in. Come on, Williams, let's call it a night. John. Marion. What's the matter? What's happened? A dreadful news. What is it? Well, they came to the hospital tonight to arrest Dr. Janney. Is that something to get so upset about? Well, they changed their minds because he cleared himself, but I heard the inspector say that they'd gone off to Dr. Janney because your mother's will was chiefly in his favor. What? Yes, in his favor, leaving you and Alice a very small amount. But well, that doesn't seem possible. Mother hated Janney. Well, she wasn't exactly fond of you and Alice either. Well, I suppose she disinherited you because she found out she wanted to marry me. Well, how could she have found out? No one knew, not even Alice. We were too careful. Oh, it, it doesn't make sense. The inspector must be wrong. No, I'm afraid not. The news came from Crothers. And surely Crothers would know about your mother's will. It certainly looks like the end of everything for you, doesn't it, Joe? I hope it isn't the end between us. I've done everything for you I could. You've been very generous, John. No. I won't let you down, just because you won't come into the money. I've something else to tell you, John. They arrested the man who was brought into the hospital with your mother. Page? 
How did you know that was his name? What do you mean? That isn't the name he gave at the hospital. Who is he? What do you know about him? I owed Paige a lot of money. Mother wouldn't give me one cent other than my salary. You know that. And I didn't know which way to turn because he said that he, that he was going to collect from her. So you planned the accident. And when it wasn't successful and you had her at your mercy at the hospital, you killed her. Marion, I swear to you, I didn't kill her. I only borrowed money from Paige. That's as far as I went. Do you expect me to believe that? Do you expect anyone to believe that? I've told you this much. Why should I lie to you now? I didn't kill her. You planned to. That's enough for anyone. And when Paige starts talking, you're as good as in the chair. I couldn't help hearing part of your conversation. I dislike women, especially nurses. They think because they know anatomy, <laughs> they're quite superior. I was going to marry one once, and just prior to the ceremony, we were about... capitalist. Oh, dear. I tell you, Inspector, you can talk until the cows come home. I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me now. <laughs> can I have a cigar? And I'm supposed to believe you were just out in the country taking a little ride when you were struck by a hit-and-run driver. Yeah, 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 now you get it, Inspector. That's it. I'm just out there riding around Minded my own business, taking the air. Then why did you assault Sergeant Dealey and break out of the hospital? Well, that's because... Well, that, that was to escape police persecution. See, there's a rumor going around the hospital that murder had been done, and I'm afraid that I'm going to get rumored right into jail if I don't take it on the lam. Well, who told you Mrs. Stack was murdered? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, give me time. Uh, a nurse, a nurse told me. And you say you weren't in an automobile with Paige. What? Huh? You say you weren't in an automobile with Paige. No, I wasn't in an automobile with Paige, and you and nobody else can get me to say I was. Then why did you run out on him when he was hurt? What? Huh? Why did you run out on him when he was hurt? I didn't run out on him. You didn't? No. I... I just went to go get help. How could you go to get help if you weren't there with him? I... Huh? How could you go? Are you hard of hearing? Uh, no, why? Are you? Then why do you make me repeat questions? I, huh? Why do you make me repeat questions? I don't know. I guess I like to hear you talk. <laughs> How could you go out to help if you weren't there with him? I, well, I... Ah, walked right into it, didn't you? Uh, listen, I'm innocent, and I can get friends to prove it. See what kind of cigars Paige likes, will you, Pat? Well, Sergeant, you can phone the DA's office to come right over. Congratulations, Inspector. I wasn't getting any place with this dough. Yeah. And we needed a stenographer in there, too. You bet, Inspector. You can take him to his cell, right? Wait a minute, Inspector. Well? Paige and I are partners in this thing. You understand? And I've got as much right to confess as he has. Well, what do you know that Paige hasn't already told us? I know as much about it as he does, and if he squealed, I expect to get the same break as he gets. You should have it. Well, I'm going to get it, too, and nobody can see that I won't get it. Yeah, well, quite right. Now, as long as you insist on talking, we'll see if you both tell the same story. Now, go on and tell it in your own way, and quietly, don't be nervous. Come on, we ain't got all day. Well, you see, it was like this. Stack owes Paige a lot of money. Paige wanted it. Stack says he couldn't give it to him. But he fixed it up with us to shove old lady Stack into a ditch accidentally. Accidentally? Yes, accidentally on purpose. He figured he'd be in the money shortly after the funeral was over. Hey, what about them cigars? Or was that just a copper sense of humor? Uh, 
tank. Take him to the prison ward. He's booked for conspiracy to commit murder. Oh, dear. Get me the Stack Memorial Hospital. Oh, do you mind if I take off my coat, Inspector? It's getting awful hot in here. Why, oh, certainly not. I want you to feel comfortable. Take that easy chair there. Oh, thanks, thanks. Can I sit out and get you some lemonade? Oh, would you? Why, oh, certainly. Well, thanks. That's, that's, that's very nice of you. That's very nice of you. Now, uh, as I understand it, this boy Stack thinks that his mother has left him a lot of money. Oh, sure. You see, he thought that he'd pay off Paige, live like a millionaire, buy boats, yachts, uh, everything, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Then Stack is our man. Oh, sure. Stack's your man. I'm not. Hey, Inspector, Stack's not at the hospital. Hasn't showed up all day. Do I phone his home? No, we'll go and contact him person. Matt? See that the stenographer gets up here to take Thomas's deposition and send and get him a gallon of lemonade. Ah, and see that he drinks it. Now remember, this is not a honky tonk or a police station. It's a private home. So when you get inside, take off your hat. I'm Police Inspector Queen. I want to see Mr. Stack at once. Hadn't you better see Miss Alice, sir? <laughs> She's in the living room. Inspector Queen, Miss Stack. I'm here to talk to your brother. My brother's been murdered. <laughs> murdered? He was hanged just like the nurse, Miss Fox. Well, where's the body? In there, just as we found him. Well, who discovered it? I did, sir, when he didn't come to breakfast. Well, why didn't you call the police? We were just going to when you arrived. Really? Phone Williams and get him over here right away. Let me show you the phone, sir. Martin, notify the hospital. Anyone in particular? Yes, tell Dr. Janney. Hello, Doc. The inspector wants you to come up to the stack home right away. Yeah, it looks like another one. Really? Well, it's murder, all right. That body's been hanging there for hours. Williams is on his way. Good. Now, you get your servants up here right away. I want to question them as to their doings and their whereabouts last night. All right, Inspector, but... Just get them up here, as I told you, if you please. Well, Williams? Well, there are no marks on his throat except the one made by the belt that hanged him. It'd be impossible to hang a man of his size while he was alive and kicking. So what? Suicide, not murder. Suicide? He beat us to it. I don't get you. Well, when he found we had Thomas and Pays in jail, he came home last night and knocked himself off because he knew that we would eventually pin it on him. Well, then we can all go get a cup of coffee. Hello. Good evening. You sit down there and stay put. Hmm? Yes, I said put. Dad, have you seen this? John Stack kills mother and nurse, then slays self. Yes, what about it? Stack didn't kill Miss Fox because he had an alibi for the time of the murder. Who's his alibi? Me. Don't you remember, Dad? We chased Thomas all over the hospital, and we came back to Stack's office, and he was still there with Dr. Dunn. He didn't leave until I left to go to Miss Fox's apartment. That's right, son. And if he didn't kill Fox, he didn't kill Mrs. Stack either. Fox was killed to prevent her from naming the murderer. This could be a break. Might lull the murderer to sleep. I can feel he's sitting pretty. And that he is Janney. I was right from the start. The motive was still money. How do we know he was telling the truth when he said he didn't know what the will contained? Really? Go after Janney and bring him here personally, right away. Yes, Inspector. Good luck, Dad. All right, Warren. Hey, remember me? What happened? Oh, well, I finally convinced him Stack wasn't it. He's back to Janney again. Oh, that's ridiculous. Dr. Janney doesn't look like a murderer. They never do. He's a very pleasant and talented man, but there's plenty against him. Are you going to stand there and let them arrest him for something he didn't do? Look, Nikki, I'm not the police department. I tell you what, 
You go in and make a complaint to Dad. See how far you'll get. Oh, so you think it's funny to persecute a man like Dr. Janney. You can stay right here and have a good life all by yourself. Good night. Why, Miss Porter? I simply had to see you tonight. I got your address in the hospital. Oh, won't you come in? Oh, what a nice place you have here. Oh, thank you. I hope I didn't interrupt your dinner. Not at all. I was just having coffee. Won't you join me? I could certainly use one. Oh, well, sit down, will you? Thank Excuse you. me. Miss Tracy, I came to tell you that the police have reopened the stack case. Oh, really? Not according to the evening papers. Do you take cream and sugar? Please. But they've changed their minds. And they're trying to pin it on Dr. Janney again. I know you're on his side from the way you acted last night. And, well, I was hoping that you might help me find a way to clear him. Oh. I'd love to. I just can't imagine how. Thank you. I wonder, is it possible, after all, that Dr. Janney is guilty? Of course not. What I'm wondering is, why John Stack killed himself exactly when he did. You know, I have a hunch that somebody told him those gangsters had been arrested. And if we could find out who that somebody is, we might have the real killer. May I have a cigarette? Oh, please do. I'm sorry. Charm the keys, baby. All of these keys were found in Miss Fox's handbag. We know what they're all for, except this one. Did you ever see it before? Take a good look. No, I haven't. Wait a minute, Dad. If she was carrying it around in her bag, it must be the key to her friend's house. Where's the rest of that stuff they brought down from the apartment? In right her bag. Here. Here's a I think you're wasting your time. I don't. Do you happen to know how friendly these two women were, Dr. Janney? I'm afraid I'm not well enough acquainted with any of my staff to know anything about their friendships. Dad, may I borrow that key? I'd like to try something. Certainly, take them all. Uh, take Billy with me? Yes, take him out of here. I want to finish this investigation. Naturally, I'd rather you didn't mention anything about my friendship with John Stack. Oh, of course I won't. It'd be too embarrassing for it to come out now. Our relationship was uh, very casual, of course. Yes, yes, I can see that. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, your gloves. I'm leaving on my vacation. Uh, too bad they didn't give it to you before all those terrible things happened. What do you mean? Before Mrs. Stack was murdered? Before Miss Fox was killed. Before John Stack committed suicide. Yes. Yes, then I'd have missed all those dreadful things. You're not going on a vacation. You're running away. You killed Mrs. Stack so that you could marry her son and come into her money. Oh, really, Miss Porter, if your accusation weren't so serious, <laughs> it would be very comical. And then you killed Miss Fox because she saw you come out of Mrs. Stack's room after you did it. You should be writing Ellery Queen's books. <laughs> You've a marvelous imagination. Imagination? Maybe. And then you drove John Stack to suicide by telling him those gangsters had been arrested. You knew it because I told you myself. You've said enough. Get in that room. Door on your left, sir. My hunch was right. Don't you shout to her so she'll know we're here. 
Take it easy, sir. That gun's as good as a confession. Ellery, it's me, Nikki. I'm in the trunk. Where's the key? I threw it out the window. Don't let her get away, Ellery. She killed him. She tried to kill me. She's crazy. I'll take this one to headquarters. You better get Nikki to a locksmith. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Dad should see you now. Let me out of this trunk. 